clearly the big takeaway from the first half, and it was something that you and I outlined when the squad was named uh, over two weeks ago now in, in Darwin, around the concerns of goal kicking. And they certainly revealed themselves again, or reared their head, if you like, um, yesterday, uh, 16-5 at halftime, but there were eight points left out there by Carter Gordon. Now, we know this kid's at the start of his test career. Um, he's probably going to be a very good test player in the years to come. But he's been lumped with this responsibility when potentially um, Quade Cooper could have been as a backup. We know how well he's been kicking the ball in recent times. Yesterday at halftime, as I said, 16-5 at the break. It could have been 16-13, and that's a totally different ball game at halftime. Uh, I'm not saying that he would have kicked all those other ones, but to be 0-3 uh, in that first half, and I think finish one from five for the match, as opposed to, to Ramos, who just steps up, Thomas Ramos, and and slots them over, hit the post on one occasion and maybe had one later miss. But um, that was just the big difference in that first half. You think about um, uh, you think about Melbourne, early opportunities where Carter Gordon misses a penalty from about 30 metres out. Um, we know in Dunedin he missed that one from about 40 metres out. Uh, those sorts of things are going to prove extraordinarily costly if they don't get it right at a World Cup because you can't. And I said it to Eddie Jones yesterday. I said, World Cups are generally won by sharpshooters. Uh, what's going on there? What can be done? He said, yeah, no, you're, you're 100% right, but we've got to back the young guys and we're where we are. And he's going to continue to get better. Those that I speak to believe he's got a pretty good kicking technique. It's just about the fact that he hasn't played that much, has he? He hasn't kicked that much. He was behind... Reese Hodge at the Rebels from a kicking capacity this year, but he also had some niggly groin and um, uh, hip flexor complaints, which meant that he didn't quite get the reps in that you would usually do throughout a training block of about 10 weeks in the middle of the season there. So that's a long time when you was apparently only really kicking off his left foot. So you would expect him to get better. Huge stage, 80,000, one of the biggest crowds he's played in front of him, of course, Melbourne, there was there was eighty four thousand, but you prefer him to have a couple of these hiccups. Maybe if they're going to have, you know, if they're going to happen, hopefully they get out of the way. And he's a confident kid, and from one understanding of, I was told by someone that Carter Gordon, well before Quade Cooper was left out, was saying that I'm results driven, and he thought that that Quade Cooper was a bit process driven, a bit too process driven, and and Carter's a confident kid. He, he will know that he's um, he's got to get it right. And it was hilarious. Taniella Tubu actually, apparently, he said to him, uh, and whether or not, they're firmly tongue-in-cheek, but he, he goes up to Carter at some stage, apparently, throughout the game. He goes, if you want me to kick, I can kick. <laughs> and well, I think it's a it's a, it's a a nice moment, hopefully, where Take the pressure. You, know, you have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, and... and and um, who knows, maybe it had the re- reverse effect, but um, uh, a good moment of joy, um, a moment of, of laughter there from Tanya Latupo, despite a tough afternoon.